Hello, my YouTube viewers. Welcome to another video from Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service. Today I have something that's probably a little unique uh, that I don't see really often at all. I've been doing uh, electronics repair since about 2014 and I started doing this as a business in 2019. And I will say that the issue I'm about to show you, this is the first time I have come across this issue since I started business. So this is a Tarimps Base 3K that I have here that I'm working on, that I've been working on. This would be day number two. I know, way too long to be working on an app. Excuse all the mess too, guys. It's July 2023 and it's the busiest time of year for me. I've got a hundred plus amplifiers uh, that need to be repaired. So I wanted to um, kind of help explain uh, the issue and what you can find when you have rebuilt a board to a point where you have no idea why it's not starting. I will tell you right now, I have rebuilt this base 3K. Um, it's about 90% rebuilt on the output section. Power supply was just fine. Uh, the output section transistors were not shorted. There was nothing shorted except the snubber network here was definitely burn up. I already tossed the resistor and the capacitor, so I really can't show you the result of this. Um, but nothing else was damaged. Uh, not to say that I haven't replaced a lot of parts. So I replaced the snubber network and the amplifier would go, uh, it would start normally, the fans would start up and go right into protect. I'm like, okay protection circuit problem so i did find that the uh, clip circuit was shorted so i re i repaired the clip circuit and fired it up and it still would go into protection i replaced the ic's yeah you can't can't quite see it but off camera here there are four 2957 ic's that i have replaced because uh, usually when you have a short in the output, it can just do substantial damage. Really what scratched my head though, no shorted output transistors. So I was really grasping at straws as to, as to why this board would not start. And then you probably already have an idea why it's not starting based on the equipment that you see on your screen right now. Just a standard simple, what are these LCR? Yeah, TR, LCR, ESR testers, meters. I've got three of them here. Um, I don't take these numbers by gospel. They're not the end all numbers. They are, I use them just to verify good or bad. And I've said this before, all these, I've only used these to verify good or bad. Uh, I have other equipment to do further testing of transistors if need be. But um, hopefully, if you're watching this, everyone knows what these are that you see here. These are the output inductors. Um, so this just cleans up your switching signal. Takes a square wave and it'll spit out your, uh, your sine wave. But inductors are very important to the function of a Class D amplifier. And you can't quite see on screen. Yeah, you can just a little bit. Sorry, my lighting above me really messes with my colors. But you can see that the this inductor is substantially darker than this inductor. These inductors are out of the base 3K. Uh, th these two are out of this board right here. And these two are out of a spare board that I have. And I wanted just to point out and show um, what I have found, I do believe to be the issue. It's the absolute last thing that could possibly be wrong with this amplifier board. Because I've also compared the readings of all the circuitry to a known board, uh, known working board. 
And that's where I, I said, all right, that's it. I removed the inductors, removed the output filter capacitors, which I very rarely ever have to do. As I noticed, as I was peeking around I, under the inductor, I saw that the white paint, uh, you can't quite see it again, of course. But this white paint, let me see, you can't quite see it, but it has browned here. Not from a short, but from being extremely hot. And I did visual inspections of the inductors when I pulled them out, and there's no physical uh, signs of being shorted. Obviously, if it did short, you'd think it'd destroy a lot of things. But we're going to get to this here in just a minute. And this one here, no visible shorts. Visible overheating of the coil itself you could see just how dark that is compared to a known good one here hard to see on the colors but just trust me this one is definitely darker they're both darker versus these two that i pulled out of my spare board so let's go ahead and take some readings of these inductors and see what we got here Again, I just use these meters to tell me good or bad. And you can see here, one to three, we have a resistance of, well, what is that? 3.3 .3 ohms. I remember what this screen is saying. Remember this, get a screenshot, because I'm going to move on to the next one. Let's disconnect this one, and let's reconnect this one not reconnect let's connect it and we will test this one one to three 1 1.3 ohms oh look we have inductance here uh 0.03 ah uh ha -huh. when i saw that i'm like oh hold on this one is showing me inductance, but yet this one is showing me just resistance. Again, and I've tested this probably 30 times just to make sure it wasn't the meter. 1.1 ohms, but no inductance. You have to have inductance in order to clean up your switching signal. That's just how these things work. It's an inductor. Um, and if you don't know how inductors work, uh, Google it. It's all over the internet. Here's the ones that came out of my spare board. 1 to 3, 1.2 ohms, 0.03 on the inductance. Hmm, well, that one's good. And then the other one from the spare board, just to show you guys that it's not my meter. Again, I use these meters to test good or bad. Oh, look, we have inductance, 0.03. Let's go back and just for the heck of it, just to make sure it's not my meter, well, I'm gonna test this one again that I suspect to have No inductance. Well, look, just by moving around, my resistance is definitely changing. So either I have a cracked core. Um, I can't. I can't say that the winding is shorted because I usually would have a really, really low resistance value. I mean, I don't get me wrong. This is showing me 0.79 ohms now instead of three ohms. Point eight five ohms. So this inductor has either got to have a cracked core, a bad core. Yeah, no inductance whatsoever. But no visible signs of shorting. Temperature 
will either crack a core or it'll degrade your core. I mean, it would have to get extremely hot. <laughs> um, I think this is probably just a ferrite core uh, to damage the properties of the core. So I do believe the reason for this board to not start is because the IC itself is seeing that it has a short. I can start this board bypassing the protection circuits and it'll start. I don't recommend doing that if you have output transistors installed. <laughs> Trust me. Um, I did that with the output transistors removed. These are brand new transistors because I also thought it had bad transistors. Who knows, right? Uh, new transistors. So when these when I when I removed these, I bypassed it and the amplifier would start just fine. Input signal. Of course, I didn't have output switching because I didn't have the high side transistors in. So I had nothing to switch to, but the amplifier would turn on, stay blue. Installed the output transistors, fire it back up in normal mode, and it would go right into protect. That tells me the IC itself was seeing an issue in the output, which I do believe is going to be this core not having inductance and showing me a practically a dead short one to three half ohm no inductance and just to verify what it should be for you guys that are working on these Hopefully, um, if you're working on one, you've got yourself a meter to be able to check these things. One to three, point three ohms. But there's our inductance. And it even shows it here as an inductor. This one does not show as an inductor. So that's what I wanted to point out is sometimes it may physically look okay, but in reality, it's broke. Sometimes these things will break in a way that you cannot see what's going on. You have to use your meters. You have to use scopes. You got to understand how these function in order to get to the conclusion of what's wrong with it. I get a lot of emails saying, well, nothing's burnt. I don't see anything burnt. Uh, you know, seven times out of 10, you're not going to see anything that's burnt. Luckily enough for me, I noticed that there was some yellowing on the white paint here, that which, which tells me it got extremely hot, led me to pull the inductors, which then I found the one that shows zero inductance. And I'm like, ah, I better show my viewers what they can expect to find if they have no visible errors, nothing else is potentially could be wrong, but yet you could have an inductor that has failed on you in some form or fashion. And I bet you money if I unwind this, you'd be able to see that the core of this thing is probably cooked. As a matter of fact, while I'm on camera with you guys, I am going to unwind this. There's a section of this core that I suspect is going to be shorted to a point where it, it either damaged the winding or damaged the core. I'm not sure, but I'm Looks like you guys might be able to see on the camera. I do see one spot that potentially could be a problem. And that's the thing is you can visually inspect this stuff all day long and never know why. It's doing what it's doing. But 
I'm assuming that we have a spot on this. That's either burnt or the core is damaged, as I had mentioned. But you can definitely see this core is, well, I don't know if you can see, but I can see it. That inside this core, even the, even the paint on the core has darkened substantially right here. So this coil got extremely hot and probably lost some lacquer on the wire right here. So I can just see where the lacquer I'd have to get out, I'd have to get out the new microscope and sh probably show you guys if it was set up right now, but it's not because obviously I don't have a lot of room here. Uh, but it looks like I am missing some lacquer right here, right on the winding right here in two spots, which would short your inductor. So that's today's lesson for you guys is if everything else looks fine, that physically looks fine, you potentially could have problems that you can't see that only things like meters can show you that's good or bad. So uh, if you have any questions, please leave them down below. I will get to you guys as soon as I can. I try to answer every question that comes through and give you guys hands when needed. Um, I, I can't give schematics, sorry guys. Um, I am under contract with Taramp, so, uh, but I am always more than happy to help you with any questions you have about their boards. I'm going to put the capacitors back in. I'm going to put these two inductors in, and I will almost bet that this will start now since we've gotten rid of the short that the IC was seeing. So thanks a lot, guys. Uh, please stay safe. Keep your fingers out of the rails, the rectifiers. Keep your fingers out of these rectifiers when these things are charged. These capacitors will hold one heck of a charge. I always discharge all my rails, if you guys didn't know. So please have something around that has a resistor on it to discharge your rails. Safety first. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next video.